Hi, I'm Avery Davidson. Thank you for joining us. Kristen Oaks White will join us a little bit later in the show. Every day, farmers work to feed the world. At the same time, bees and other pollinators are working to pollinate the plants farmers depend upon. This week, Twyla's Neil Malasson takes us to a Louisiana research facility that is leading the globe in the fight to save bees. Honeybees are insects, but really they're a lot more like livestock. And like livestock, they can be artificially inseminated inside the appropriately named Love Shack here at the USDA Honeybee Lab in Baton Rouge. The love that goes into these queen bees is breeding better generations. Historically, over many, many years, bees have been bred for high honey production. And then now with almond pollinations, we breed bees that build up rapidly very early in the season. So any of those traits or behaviors, as long as we identify it, measure it, and breed for it, we could select for it. Frank Rinkevich is working on helping stop one of the biggest killers of honeybees, the Varroa mite. He says they've found a behavior that helps stop the spread called Varroa sensitive hygiene. And the way that Varroa sensitive hygiene works is that the worker bees will detect if there is a reproductive mite in a sealed brood cell. So where the honeybee pupa is covered with a wax capping and silk capping, there are workers that will detect that mite. Those workers then open up and uncap that cell, and then workers remove the pupa, and in some cases either throw her out of the colony or destroy her, thus interrupting the mites reproductive cycle. Mites aren't the only issue bees have. Like people, they can get sick from viruses and other pathogens. Here at the lab, they're testing to see how these drones respond to various viral cultures. However, one project they're working on is to get the bees to help inoculate themselves. We have some really exciting work led by Vincent Rastigliano, um, where he is essentially engineering uh, therapeutic food for bees so that it's uh, essentially inserting uh, antiviral um, treatment in uh, microalgae um, food that then are fed to bees so it's kind of this edible vaccine. And it's not just building better bees being done here, it's building better beehives including using different shapes inside the hive. And that encourages the bees to put these antimicrobial plant resins within their hive and that we found really boosts their health. So that's something that beekeepers can do kind of in the background that can boost colony populations uh, and increase their health uh, and increase productivity. And just like people, bees suffer when it's hot or their diet changes. Sharon O'Brien is looking into how to help bees adapt to changing conditions. It's for pollen restriction research. Basically we have two different stocks and some of them are going to be you know, pollen restricted and some of them aren't. And, you know, it's just kind of look at temperament and, you know, what's going on, you know, with the bees when they're in a, you know, dearth and don't have as much food. The research being done here in Baton Rouge is not only shaping bee research in the United States and across the globe, but it's also helping save almost all food production for the future. Reporting from Baton Rouge, I'm Neil Malasa. As you might imagine, springtime is a busy time for both bees and those researchers. With the warmer weather, bees are pollinating the crops that will soon become this year's harvest in the fall.